welcome to Alpha Militaria TV. Thanks very much for tuning in once again. My name is Richard Saunders. Now, if you'd like to support the channel so that we can keep doing these reviews, you can do that in a number of ways. You can click on the links below uh, to our store, which we've recently uh, opened. And also we've got some links to some, uh, some Amazon pages for some products that I use on a regular basis. Or you can simply uh, subscribe to the channel. That will help us out too. Now, we've been doing a few uh, affordable PCPs over the last few months. And I've got another one here. This is the uh, the Gamo GX40. It's a PCP rifle, retails for about 380 pounds. And I have to say, I'm a big fan of Gamo rifles. Um, now, Gamo uh, acquired BSA, as many of you will know, a little while ago. And there is an awful lot of similarities between Gamo rifles um, and BSA rifles just now. And that's not a bad thing by any stretch of the imagination. You know, there's a cold hammer forged barrel. The magazine is very similar as well. Uh, the fill pressure um, you know, is very similar to BSAs as well. Um, so I've got high hopes for this. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to walk around the rifle, talk about the key features, zoom in on some of those, and then we'll uh, put a target down the range and see how it shoots and then put it on the chrono as well. So the Gamo GX40. Uh, very similar to the uh, Gamo Coyote, um, albeit it's a little bit shorter and, and a little bit lighter. About 960 millimeters overall, and about three kilos. So it's quite compact uh, and quite light as well. That's obviously not including a scope or a silencer. Um, but it, it does feel really good in, in the shoulder. Now, starting at the back, you have this uh, perforated shoulder pad, uh, butt pad. It doesn't adjust in any way, uh, but it's very comfortable. The, uh, the comb up here, with this kind of line around here, it looks like it should adjust, but it doesn't. It's just part of the molding. And the whole stock is a one-piece synthetic mold. Even the trigger guard is part of the mold as well. But it's very good quality. Um, I should imagine it's very, very durable as well. So it'll take plenty of abuse in the field uh, and in the garden, you know, with younger shooters and what have you. And you know, really is a very good quality synthetic stock. There's no creaking in it. There's no flex in it at all. And it, it doesn't you know, kind of sound hollow like some synthetic stocks uh, do. Um, there's a nice big cutout for your hand here. Um, plenty of room even for the biggest hands. The pistol grip is quite steep um, and has patches of stippling on the pistol grip. And also on the forend here, makes it very good uh, to grip. Now the trigger is the blurb says that it's a two-piece trigger, and I'll be honest, when I've shot this, it seems more like a one continuous single stage. But it is very smooth, and it does let off reasonably well as well. Now, I'm going to moan about the, the safety catch, which is located in the trigger guard up here. It's like a little mini trigger. Um, the one thing I would say is that you know, when it's on, you know, it gets in the way of you touching the trigger, so you do know that it's on. But I really don't like... Um, safety catches that are anywhere near the trigger and I don't like fumbling around in the dark anywhere near the trigger when I'm trying to make the rifle safe but it does lock things up very well uh, bolt action um, you pull it back a little short stage then back further uh, to fully cock the rifle nice and positive bolt it needs a reasonably firm hand but it's very reliable and it cycles pellets through a 10 shot magazine we'll show you the magazine in a little while and, and anyone who's got a BSA will recognize the magazine. And the good thing about the magazine is, unlike BSAs, there's no um, retaining catch or clip that needs to be pushed forward and back to, to lock the magazine. It literally just pulls in and, and out. You've got a nice long raised uh, dovetail rail up here to sight your scope. And the combination of that rail and this cheek piece gives you really good eye alignment. Now the barrel is um, a cold hammer forged barrel. So again, that's um, very um, um, you know, clear evidence of, of the BSA link. And in actual fact, on this side of the rifle, it's, it's got a, um, a mark on here that says that it's made in the UK. So I'm guessing that it's made up in the Midlands by in, in the BSA factory. The, the air cylinder will take a 232 bar fill. And that is achieved by putting this cap off the end uh, and attaching the filler probe in here. And again, we'll show you that in a little bit more close up in a little while. And right at the end up here, you've got a pressure gauge to tell you what your overall fill pressure is. Now with a 232 bar fill, you'll get about 130 shots in 2.2 and a little bit less, around about 100 in 177. 
and right at the very end of the rifle here, uh, you have this sort of tiny little sort of perforated uh, muzzle cap, um, which if you remove that, it reveals a half inch UNF for you to attach a silencer to. It doesn't come with a silencer. Uh, and to be honest, although it's reasonably quiet, um, if you're gonna be hunting with it or using it in the back garden, you probably would, have, would wanna put a silencer on it. So I think those are the main points. We'll zoom in on a few of those in close-up detail and we'll go through the whole magazine and uh, air filling process as well. Now the magazine is, um, as I said before, is BSA's design. And to, act, to, to get it out of the breech, all you need to do is pull back the, um, the cocking lever, the bolt, sorry, and the magazine pulls straight out of the rifle. And as you can possibly see at the top here, it's numbered so that you can uh, count down and see how many shots you have left. And I don't know if you can see that, but right just about there is a little white dot and when that white dot appears, and it's visible from the left side of the rifle as you're looking down, um, that will tell you that you're on your last shot. Takes 10 shots in 177 and in 22 as well. Now, filling the magazine is nice and straightforward. Um, as you can see, there's this, on the top here, there's this plastic um, inner drum. And what you'll need to do is you'll just need to, there's no need to, to pre-rotate that at all. You just take a pellet, push it in, rotate that collar round to the next chamber, put a second pellet in, and you just keep going until you've filled in all 10 pellets. And I believe if, if they're anything like the, the magazines in the BSAs, um, the 2-2 magazine has a red inner, um, inner drum, and I believe 2-5 is, is white, although I'm not sure if this rifle is available in 2-5. But you literally just keep going round and round and round, putting your pellets in. We're nearly there. And then when you put all the pellets in, it won't rotate any further. And then to insert into the, into the rifle, it goes in from the, uh, from the left, and I'm doing this a little bit cack-handed. Um, and you can see those numbers on the top. Just literally pushes into the, the breech there. And then you return the bolt, push it down, and you're good to go. Right, well, filling the GX40 is nice and easy. As I said before, you've got this collar on the front of the top of the cylinder. Pull that off, and that will reveal the actual filler port itself, that little hole in there. Then what you wanna do is you wanna take your provided uh, filler probe, insert that into that port as far as it will go, then obviously attach your airline um, to, your, uh, to the filler probe and then give that a 232 bar fill, and that will give you around about 130 shots in 2.2, and a little bit less, about 100 or a little bit more in 177. And then once you've obviously filled up with air, return that cap, and then right on the very end here, you'll see that there's a, uh, a nice clear gauge that will tell you how much air you've got left. Well, I'm down at the beautiful surroundings of Reading Air Target Shooting Club once again on their 30 meter range. I set a target out at 30 meters, and I'm using Air Arms Diablo Field 177 pellets in uh, 4.52 caliber. So let's see how the GX40 shoots.
first 10 shots. Um, looked a little bit sort of two separate groups, but we're going to have a look, see how we got on. Right. Well, I'd like to say that I was clever enough to shoot two separate groups there, but I was aiming at the bullseye for all of them. And it seems to have put probably five pellets through one hole there, and then probably five, five pellets through another hole there. But that's reasonably close. That's what I know. 10 pence piece at, uh, at 30 meters using Air Arms Diablo field pellets in 177 4.52 caliber. A little bit of adjustment low and right, and then we'd be spot on. Just shows what that cold hammer forged barrel is capable of. Well, there you go. That is the Gamo GX40, 380 pounds. Very affordable, good quality PCP rifle. That really nice, very accurate. Bang on 11.3, 11.4 foot pounds as well. So full power, yeah, very nice, impressive package that. Um, anyway, I hope you found it useful. If you did, please hit the like button and uh, subscribe as well. And if you'd like to support the channel, check out our links below. And if you'd like more information on this rifle and a whole bunch of other air gunning topics, take a look at our website, which is www.alphamilitaria.com. Thanks for watching.